Hey, this is Carol Ann Sherman from sunny South Florida, and I'm taking the opportunity today to show you a little more about painting on UPO. We're going to do a very quick little painting, and I can show you how easy it can be. I'm going to show you how to make the UPO stick to the paper, the paint stick to the UPO, so that you'll be off to a good start when you want to paint. Uh, our painting today is going to be called The World Behind Molly Ann, and the first thing I'm going to do is apply my background. And as you may know or may not know, I usually do a solid background to maintain a synergy throughout the entire painting. So today I'm going to start with a greenish yellow background. It's a Holbein greenish yellow. And I'm going to go on here and really carefully lay out some paints. Once we get that on, I'm going to take a big brush, like a big sky wash, and smooth it all over the paper. Don't worry about having brush strokes. We're going to get rid of all those. And the trick to painting on UPO, or I should say one of the tricks, is maintaining the proper balance between the water and the paint. And that's something that really only comes with practice. And even then, sometimes you can't get it right. So there's no real rule that I can tell you. I can tell you things like start with clean hands, don't have any makeup on. I don't wear any jewelry because it tends to mar the paper. You pose a polypropylene surface. You can paint on both sides of it. It's completely 100% recyclable. And we don't kill any trees to make it, which is a great thing. So now that we have this greenish yellow background, I am going to take, I think we're going to do a quick overall paper towel background just to give it some texture to work on. Don't be worried because you don't have to leave it all the same throughout your painting. So we're going to start up at the top. We're going to use a paper towel with a reasonably heavy texture. We're going to give it once over. I'm going to change the direction of the pattern a couple of times. Isn't that fun? And just to make it a little smoother, I have this patterning all over the paper. The next thing I'm going to do is take a plain sponge roller and go over it and burnish it just to flatten it out. It will still leave more paint in some areas and less in others, which is what we want to accomplish. But we will still maintain that synergy that's so important. It dries reasonably quickly. I don't want to take too much out. Molly Ann is my little dog, my little girl dog. And we're just painting, well, you'll see, we're painting the back of her today. The next thing I want to do is go in and we're going to start with the background on this particular painting to keep the composition fairly strong. We want to start with the background of this chair that is, it's actually not a chair, it's actually a dog bed. So she's laying on it. I don't tape the paper down because I like to turn it around so I don't run my hand through the wet paint, you have two options when you're at this point with a UPO painting. You can either take the paint off and paint on the white surface, or you can paint right over it and see what you get, which I always like to do first because you can always take it off later. UPO is pretty forgiving. Oh, that's the reason I really like this. We're going to get our background in. Try not to get fingerprints on the paper. If you do get a fingerprint on the paper and you want to remove it, it's really not a big issue. It's quite easy. Go in with that. Rub it out with a plain piece of paper. A lot of people use alcohol to clean their paper with and janitor and a drum and I don't know what else, but I don't. I just like to use a little bit of tissue and that will do the job. We're going to take the roller again 
and I'm going to take a plain tissue this time. Lay it down relatively flat on the painting. Lift it off. We see we have a little too much paint right over here, so we'll go back in and take a little more of that off. Now, when you get to this point, you can tell where you need more paint, or less paint. The thing you've got to do is be able to work fairly quickly with this, or it will dry on you. That I had a little too much water mixed in with the paint. I'm going to throw some lavender in there also in places. And you can use any number of colors while you're doing this just so that you have something to come back to to work with, to match up, or to draw throughout the painting. Very important. Never leave home without it. Toilet paper. Okay, let's take a flat surface. Roll over this one more time. I have a slight wrinkle in the paper, which should leave a mark where the edge was. There we go. And we've got a good jump on the background here. And we'll go in and work on it more later on. Let's move on to the dog. Molly Ann's a little red doxy dog, a hot dog. And I usually like to start with the lighter parts of the red and then come in and go over it with the darker parts. This is a permanent yellow orange that I'm painting with. Don't worry if you go out of the lines or over lines because you can always come back in. We're going to paint up against them when we get a little further along in the process. Use a nice little brush. That's a 24. Gets us there faster. I'm a reasonably fast painter because I don't have time like everybody else. It seems to be a major complaint with artists, so I say use a bigger brush. And I'm not worried about these streaks from the brush because we're going to come back and flatten those out once we get it all on there. This time I'm going to use just this sponge roller with no paper and I'm going to go over the dog and burnish this orange color down for a base. Oh, she's looking good. Next thing we're going to do is take and go in there and do a little bit of darks to the dog. I'm going to mix this orange with a little opera, which will just give it a little bite. We're going to darken her head because it's further away from us, and we want it to recess. So we're going to start with the opera color. She has little wrinkles because she's a little chubby, so we'll do one of her wrinkles there. Crimson Lake is a very good deep shadowing color. We're going to go in and put some of the Crimson Lake under her 
around in front of her legs and under here. Now don't forget these are all going to blend in when we roll them out. We're going to take the same roller, or you can use a different roller. If you're using conflicting colors, you're going to want to make sure you use either different rollers or clean them very well between. I'm going to go in and I'm going to roll out some of these sh little shadows that are on here. I don't care that I'm going over the lines because her bed's going to be a different color, so we're going to paint right over that anyway. It doesn't really matter. Molly Ann's the kind of dog that kind of has a smile on both ends. She has something called a whirl, which, which is when your hair turns in circles. Funny, I have some too. Most people do. So right on both sides of her tail, we want to come in with something a little darker just to show off that little whirl she has. It looks like she's smiling from the back. That's what I like about her. She's happy from both ends. Coming to you, going away from you. So I'm going to go in with a little burnt umber. First, we're going to do the pads of her feet. Just a very little water. I work from a running palette. So this is a, a reasonably new palette, but my paints get a little dried out. When they get dried out, one of the things I like the best is that I can just take them an hour before I'm going to paint and reconstitute them with a little spray of water. Okay, back to the tail part. We're going to shadow the bottom of her tail and get back to that little whirl where the curls. She doesn't have that much hair to curl, but it just kind of goes this way and that way. This side will go this way, and this side will go that way. And she gets a little darker around the tail there. Under her leg, it's going to get a little bit darker. I'm going to use my, while I'm using the burnt umber, I'm going to use it to put the creases in her neck. I'm going to do it fairly watery because I want to blend it with what's already here. I don't want it to be too severe. I do want this to recede, but I know that she needs to have it. We'll put it there. Be careful not to drag your fingers through the paint. It's not good. I work from my palette, and sometimes I'll go in and mix all the colors that I've been using, sort of a, a mother color, so to speak, something a little darker and redder. We're going to go in behind her leg here. Around this part of her leg here for the shadow. Right around the edge of her here for that shadow. Back to her bottom. She's a little heavy on the bottom, so we'll make her a little darker. 